Welcome into the Mustang Roundup. The men's basketball team needed every second available to pull out a win last night against Loyola Marymount. We've got their head coach. Uh, we should mention <laughs> that Coach Union, who's rolling this season, beat Rolling Hills Prep 58 to 20 in eight-man football. Very entertaining. Of course, Atascadero won the Pac-7 League last year. The Greyhounds had a chance to move into the top spot this season with a home win against this loaded up Rigetti team. And I can't think of a better way to spike the ratings than for Goliath to whoop the heartbreak kid right. Right. It's going to be like that story, David versus Goliath. Goliath crushed the little David. That's how it went, wasn't it? Two to shoot. Joyner gives it to Nunnally. Nunnally gets a good look. Forder goes. UCSB has done it. A quick header lit up by Molino. It was blue-green rivalry day with the women playing in Santa Barbara and the men in San Luis Obispo. The Gauchos have owned the men's matchup of late, winning 11 of the last 12 games, including at the buzzer the past two at Cal Poly. A sellout crowd was on hand. The Mustangs were without leading scorer and rebounder Chris Eversley because of an ankle injury. Without him, there's probably not going to be any high-flying dunks, right? Well, actually, his replacement had a pretty nice throwdown. Joel Alwish goes up and gets it. At the end of the first half, Santa Barbara secures the rebound, but Dylan Royer steals the outlet and hits the three at the buzzer. Cal Poly up 29-21 at the half. Allen Williams brought the Gauchos back to within three. He had 24 points and 17 rebounds. The Mustangs quickly pushed the lead back to 14 as Kyle Ottister got hot. UCSB came back to within six, but Pauly finished him off down the stretch. Royer made seven of 16 three-pointers as the Mustangs were getting looks against that UCSB matchup zone defense. Mustangs win 67-49. The women played in Santa Barbara, and it was the road team jumping out to an early lead. Jonay Irvin sneaks in for the steal. Six points, but 11 assists for Irvin. The Mustangs were bombing from the perimeter. Ariana Elegato made four from long range. Kayla Griffin made three. As a team, Cal Poly was 8 of 17 from three-point land. Molly Schlemer, she put the Mustangs up 18 to 2. Later in the first half, Destiny Mason frees herself up with a screen, knocks down the jumper to pull the Gauchos to within 12. But Cal Poly kept the game comfortable. It was never in doubt as the Mustangs win 65-56. Schlemer was the high scorer. The Rigetti High grad at 18 points to go along with 13 rebounds. The Cal Poly baseball team grinded out a win in San Francisco. Mustang starter Matt Imhoff pitched eight shutout innings. Cal Poly got him the win with a run in the ninth. The Mustangs now 2-0. UCSB won in Fresno. A junior college rivalry was renewed tonight as well. Cuesta playing at first place Hancock. The Bulldogs own the first half. Up ahead to Demetrius Thomas. He takes it easy on the rim there. Later, Thomas with the steal. He gets another one. 39 points for the freshman. Hancock was up 57-31 at the half. The Bulldogs were ahead by 27 with 16 minutes left. But then here comes the Cougars. Oscar Pedrosa hits a three. Then it's Plom and Ristoff, one of his six three-pointers. Cuesta pulled it within three in the final seconds. Kenny Robinson drives and sets up Ristoff. The Bulgarian ties it with a second left. The Cougars controlled the game in overtime and iced it down the stretch with free throws. Cuesta comes back from 27 points down to shock first place Hancock, 105-103 the final. Same matchup on the women's side, only this time it's the Cougars who still have a shot at a Western State title. Courtney Chadwick with the steal in the open court, one of 30 turnovers by the Bulldogs. Aria Johnson was dominant inside, 12 points and 19 rebounds for the Morro Bay high grad. Atascadero's Alyssa Palma led the way with 16 as Cuesta wins. 57-24, the Cougars will play for first place in the regular season finale next Saturday against Ventura. Six area girls basketball teams tried to extend seasons tonight. San Luis Obispo hosted Ganesha in a second round game of Division 3A. Two years from, removed from a 1-23 season. It's been an impressive turnaround for the Tigers. In the early going, a nice find. Morgan Liebscher, Jessica Judge on the other end of that assist. A game-high 17 for Judge. 
Liebscher gets in the passing lane to set herself up for an easy one on the other end. The magic carpet ride continues for the Tigers. They take it 55-31. Next up is the quarterfinals on Wednesday. The Morro Bay girls won on the road. The Pirates will host third-ranked Windward in the quarterfinals on Wednesday. And when I say third-ranked, I'm talking in the nation. Atascadero pulled out a road win. The Greyhounds will also be home in the quarters. St. Joe wins as well, so the Knights are one of eight teams still alive in Division 4A. Valley Christian advances in 6A. The Caprio girls water polo team was trying to upset its way into the semifinals of the Division 5 playoffs. The Conquistadors playing second-seeded Riverside Pauley. Victoria Bray, the freshman, fires one to the back of the net, but for Cabrillo, there wasn't enough of that and too much of this. The Bears are loaded. They went on to win 21-6. In Division Three, a Royal Grandy came away with a huge win at Miracosta. Ozzy Casada expected to build a career with his lightning quick jab. Started uh, uh, training in uh, uh, boxing when I was seven years old to, to get, uh, keep me out of trouble. Three hours training every day, Monday through Friday, and uh, was looking forward to uh, um, uh, go to the Olympics. That dream was shattered by a drive-by shooter who put a bullet through Casada's head. Walking home about mm, one o'clock in the morning, and uh, uh, right when I got to a, a street corner, uh, a car, uh, car pulled in and uh, turned their lights off, and all I heard was just gunfire. Police never caught the shooter. Casada was in a coma for three months. Got out of that coma and uh, they did uh, 14 surgeries to see if they could get my eyesight back and uh, it was a negative. He struggled to find a sense of purpose. Angry and uh, mad and um, uh, it was very confusing for me. I didn't understand the, the blindness. Uh, uh, I thought it could be fixed. I didn't want nothing to do with nobody and uh, I stayed in my room for uh, two years. Casada gained a lot of weight. He ballooned to 290 pounds. That's when he decided to get back to the gym and become a boxer again. That's what makes me, uh, uh, keeps me going in life. Uh, you know, the, the dream of uh, uh, standing in front of a, a punching bag and uh, uh, doing my workouts and it, it, it what keeps me going and going because uh, otherwise uh, uh, I'm pretty sure the depression will come in and um, it's, it's hard to get out of that. Casada quickly lost 70 pounds by training like he did before the shooting. Now 41 years old, he still works out three hours a day, six days a week. Yeah, I take uh, Sundays off and just try to catch up on my social life. With his seeing eye dog Ivory looking on, Casada does 45 minutes on the punching bag in addition to weight training and cardio work. There aren't any opponents, but Casada lives the life of a boxer as he always expected to. I always had that on inside of me, inside my heart, where I, I, I could do anything I put my mind to, 